Hello students, uh, this is going to be the second part of 1.4. Uh, we ended up uh, the other lesson doing example one, and it was the surface area of a triangular prism, a prism being an object that has a top and bottom that are the same. In this case, I guess it's the front and the back would be the same triangle, and then the rest of the sides are made of rectangles. We're going to move on to some curved objects now, and we're going to start with a cylinder. So a right cylinder, that just means a cylinder that's standing straight up and down, you know, per perpendicular to the ground, um, has two congruent bases and a curved surface. Congruent just means equal in this sense, so it means that the top matches the bottom. So, so really, if you figure out what the area is of the top circle, it's the same for the bottom circle. You just got to multiply whatever you get by two. The uh, formulas for all of these, I've posted a formula sheet on the website, and I think I showed it in the last video, but maybe I'll just show it one more time. If I can get the right page here. And show you the formula sheet. Math 9, learning modules, unit 1, and I believe it's in 1.4. There we go. So I don't really expect you to memorize these. I suspect if you do enough questions, you will memorize them just because you're doing a lot of it. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want, you can print this off and leave it beside your computer or post it to the wall, or you could just come back to this page every time you need it. But that should be enough formulas to take us through the surface area of composite objects lesson that we're doing. So I'm just going to skip back to the cylinder here. Uh, so. Our, our top and our bottom are the same, and they're circles, and we have a formula to, to figure out the air surface area of a circle. But some people have a little trouble wrapping their head around the fact that the middle part there is a rectangle, and I'll just demonstrate it using a piece of paper. So this is this piece of paper is folded up into a cylinder right now. There's a there's a hole, but it's rounded at the top, and it's, the, it's roughly the same size as the hole on the bottom. But if I unwrap it, it becomes a rectangle. And we know how to figure out the area of a rectangle, it's just the length times the width. So as long as we can figure out what those two numbers are, then we've got all of the stuff that we need in order to figure out the surface area. So in this case, <clears throat> excuse me, the circumference of a circular base is 2 pi r, okay? So sometimes you see that written as pi d, so pi times d, and sometimes you'll see it written as 2 pi r. The most important thing to remember here is, hopefully we've seen this before, pi, that sign means pi equals 3.14. 3.14169, I can't remember all the decimals, but we're going to use 3.14 for estimate of pi. So that's a good thing. If we see the pi symbol, we know that number. We know it's 3.14. Um, if you are given a diameter, okay, you'll have to either use pi times d, okay, diameter being, if I just scroll down a little bit here and give myself a little more room. Okay, let's just look at two circles here. If, ooh, that's a terrible circle. Why don't I just draw one using the circle tool? Eh, wouldn't that make more sense? I think that would make more sense. Okay, so I'm gonna draw two circles. All right, there's one circle and, draw a circle. And then maybe I'll just copy and paste another one. So it's the exact same circle, exact same size. If I draw a line from the center of the circle, and this is just going to be as close to the center as I can find it, out to the edge, and then I'm going to draw a line that goes all the way through the center of the circle from one edge to the other. That's, you know, it's not perfect, but that's reasonably close. The measure from the center of a circle to the edge of the circle is the radius, and that radius is equal no matter where you are in the the circle. So this, this could be pointing this way, it could be pointing anywhere. As long as it starts in the middle, okay, and goes to the edge, it's a radius, and that, that has to be the center point. Now, if there is a line that runs through the center of a circle from one side all the way to the other, that's a diameter. Okay. A diameter is always twice as long as the radius. So what that means is if you go 2 times the radius, it will always equal the diameter. So when we're dealing with pi, okay, 2 pi radius is actually the exact same thing as pi times d. 
And these are multiplication statements, so you could write it as pi times d, or you could write it as d pi. Anything that's touching is multiplication. So it's 2 multiplied by 3.14 multiplied by the radius. It could be 2 pi r, it could be r pi 2, it could be pi 2, uh, pi 2 r. It doesn't matter what order these three letters are in or these three things are in, as long as they're all there. Same thing over here, it could be pi d or it could be d pi. It's multiplication, you could change things around. So um, if you see any of these, that's what it means. Make sure you keep your radius separate from your diameter. If your radius is five, because these are the exact same circles, so let's just say that this radius is five. Okay, that means that this diameter is 10. Okay, and, and backwards too. If they give you the diameter, you can always figure out the radius by just cutting it in half, by dividing it by two. So I think that's review from, from somewhere along the line in grade four to grade eight, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Um, what other things do we need to know about a cylinder? We need to know the height. Okay, so a cylinder has these two circles and it's also got a rectangle, which is the part that wraps around. So if we look at the part that wraps around, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a rectangle. This isn't a scale, obviously. But if this is the part that wraps around, let's look at this as being the height. And they usually will give us the height. The tough part is finding out the length. So this is usually the height. Now for the length, okay, we have to do a little bit of math. <clears throat> but luckily it's not too tricky. You just have to remember that this is the way we do it. If you think about it, when we when we turn, I'll just use the piece of paper again here, I'll just put this up on the big screen for a second. If we take our paper, which is just a rectangle, okay, just a rectangle, and then we make it into a cylinder, we'll make it into a rough cylinder, this is the height, and usually they give us the height on the cylinder, okay? What they don't give us is the length, so if I unfold this, okay, this is the part that they typically don't give us. So we have to figure out what that is. But luckily enough, we know from other math classes, because one end touches the other, if we need to figure out how far around it is in that circle, that's really just the perimeter of a circle, okay? So when you unfold it, this measurement up here is really just the exact same measurement as when you fold it or when you sort of tuck it around and then trace the outside of the circle. It's the exact same edge, so it's the exact same measurement. So how do we find, how do we find a, uh, the perimeter of a circle? Okay, the perimeter of the circle is, uh, is just two pi r, so, or uh, circumference. When it's a circle, we don't say perimeter, we say circumference, but really it's the same thing. It's, it's the fence around the outside, right? The area is the stuff we paint in the middle Right, and the, and the perimeter or the circumference would be the outside, the measure of the outside of the circle. So when we figure out what the circumference of the circular base is, either top or bottom, it doesn't matter, it actually gives us this measurement right here. So I'm just gonna say here, length, excuse my pen, length equals, okay, it's gonna be two pi r, or length, equals pi times d. So we could figure out what that length is and they usually give us the height. And if we've got a, a length and a, and a width, in this case, the height is the width. Uh, if we've got a length and a height or a length and a width, we can figure out the area of a rectangle pretty easily. So uh, that one hopefully makes a little bit more sense when we do an example, which we're gonna do right away. Okay, so let's determine the surface area for each of the following object. Well, that's pretty bad English right there, so or poor English, I guess I should say. Maybe I should say objects. And maybe there's only one, I can't remember. What we've got is we've got a cylinder, and they gave us a line across the middle of the circle that says two. So what they gave us there is a diameter, and they also gave us the height of the cylinder. So I'm just gonna make a little note here that two is a diameter, not a radius, okay? And six is the height. So I'm going to, I'm just gonna draw myself. You don't always have to do this, but for the first couple, I think it makes sense so you don't forget something. I'm gonna draw all the faces of this object. So I know that there's a circle at the top, all right? I know, come on, here we go. I also know there's another circle at the bottom. OK, 
Okay. And the third thing I know is that there is a rectangle that unwraps to match those circles. And then I'm going to put my dimensions on them because I don't want to forget what my measurements are. They only gave us two measurements, but in this case, it's enough. All right, so this is, I'll call this the top and I'll call this the bottom, okay? For the top okay, and the bottom, the measurement here is two. I only need to do one of them, okay? Because this one is the same as this one. You can put an equal sign there. What do we know about the rectangle? Well, we know the height. The height is six. What we don't know is this part right here. We have to figure that part out. Um, I'm gonna erase that and I'm gonna put a six because that kind of, or a question mark because that kind of looks like a seven. So this is the part that we don't know. All right, let's just keep that in mind for a second, okay? Let's figure out what the surface area of the top and bottom are. Well, we know the top and bottom are exactly the same. So I'm just going to do two times whatever our measurement is, because we've got a top and a bottom. There's two of them. What is the area of a circle? Well, I think if we go back to the other page, it should tell us. There we go right there. Two times the area of one circular base. The area of a circle, you've probably heard it many times before, pi r squared, pi r squared, OK? So you can't use diameter for this. You have to figure out what the radius is. Did they give us enough information to find the radius? Sure they did. Two is the diameter, okay, comma. So radius is one. Remember, it's always half, okay? Always half of the diameter. So make sure that you know whether they gave you a diameter or whether they gave you a radius. And if you need the radius, you're gonna to have to cut the diameter in half. So in this case, what we need is the top and bottom is two times, I'm just gonna write out the variables for now, pi r squared for the top and bottom. So two times 3.14, because we always know what pi is, times r squared, which is one squared. Order of operations, Okay, bed mass, bed mass says that we have to do the exponents first. So one squared is just one. That makes it pretty easy. So it becomes two times 3.14 times one. So 2.2 times 3.14 times one is 6.28. Okay, so this, these two circles together, remember we multiplied it by two, are 6.28. So now let's figure out the, I don't have this labeled, but what do you want to call this? This is the wraparound part. So um, should I just call this the W for wraparound maybe? So let's say that the, the wraparound, the surface area for the wraparound equals length times width. Okay. Our length, okay. Our length is going to be, what did we say? We said it was going to be either pi times D or two pi R. It doesn't matter which one we use. Maybe I'll do 2 pi r for this, but we'll just keep using radius. So it's 2 pi r times, okay, times the uh, length times width. In this case, this is the width, okay? We, we usually refer to it to as height when we're doing a cylinder, but width and height for this are the same. So it's that times 6. Length, this is the length part, and this is the width part. So what that equals is 2 times 3.14, because that's pi, times radius. Now this time it's not r squared, it's just radius. So times one, okay, and then times another six. Okay, so it's all multiplication. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Okay, we've got two times 3.14 times one, which isn't gonna change anything, times six. So I'll crank up my calculator for that. Two times 3.14 times one, I'm not gonna do, but times six is 37.68. So 37, 0.68, and I don't think we had any units squared here, it was just numbers. So our um, our area of the top and bottom together is 6.28, and our area of the part that wraps around is 37.68. We don't have anything to subtract or get rid of, so all we need to do for the total surface area, just extend my page here, okay, so total surface area, and remember I just use SA for surface area, equals 6.28, nice work Dunbar, 6.28, or 6.28, plus 
The, uh, so that's the top and bottom, plus the part that wraps around is 37.68. Okay, so if we do that on our computer, computer being calculator, 43.96. So the final answer is 43 decimal 96. And I'm just going to say units squared because I didn't say whether it was centimeters or meters or kilometers. Okay, so there's one example. And let's carry this forward to the next one. Ooh, okay, now we've got an object that doesn't look like it's made of separate objects, but we can separate it into objects. I don't have any formula that's going to tell us what the area of this weird shaped thing on the front is. Okay. The front part, or the uh, side part here is a, is a rectangle, so that's pretty easy. This is also a rectangle, that's pretty easy. Back part's a rectangle, okay, but bottom part's a rectangle, but what do we do for the front and the back, because that's a weird shape. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to separate it out into two objects that we, that we recognize and we know how to work with. And I'm just going to use the line tool to show you. So what happens if I take this object and I cut it like that? Okay. Now I think hopefully you can start to, to recognize that, oh, I've made a triangular prism on top. I know how to do those. And I've got a regular rectangular prism on the bottom, and I know how to do those as well. So you're allowed to separate these compound objects or these composite objects into different shapes <clears throat> if it'll help you out, and normally it does. So here's, here's just a, you know, a more in-depth example of what I just did. I cut it right there to take, make it into two separate shapes, and we have to keep in mind that there is an overlap, right? Because these two shapes are welded together right here, so I have to remember that when I'm figuring this thing out, I shouldn't include either of those measurements. You could do the whole thing and subtract the overlap, but usually for ones like this, I just don't include them in the first place and it makes it easier for me. All right, so let's get to work on solving this one. Uh, I'm gonna call this object number one. Okay, so this is gonna be object number one and this is gonna be object number two. Let's just do them separately and then we'll add them together at the end, to try to keep things organized. Okay, so what does object number one have? Well, it just like any of our objects, it's got a front and a back. Um, it's got three different sides. So let's, let's say we've got front and back. Let's just do those first because they're the same size. So front and back, I can just do two times whatever I get. Front and back's a triangle. Excellent, that's a triangle. So a uh, triangle is half of base times height, right? So two times. I'm gonna say base times height over two. That's just a different way of saying half of base times height. That will give us our measurement for the front back. The lucky thing is, is because it's multiplication, we've got a two up top and a two on the bottom, we can just cross them up. So the front and back really just equals base times height. So this is the base. And this is the height. Okay. It doesn't matter which order we put them in. It could be eight times six, or it could be six times eight. So we'll do eight times six uh, base times height, and that equals 48 centimeters squared. That just takes care of the front and the back, but we've got other sides of this. We've got three rectangles. We've got a rectangle here, a rectangle on the bottom, which we're going to ignore, and then the rectangle at the back. So I'm just gonna say, um, what should I say? I should call this one, I'm gonna call this one here the R for the right side, except it's on the left side, Sidney Dunbar. We're going to call it L for left. Can't even get my right and left straight today. Okay, so there's the left, and I'll just call this one on the top, uh, on the top piece here. I'm just going to call it T for top. So let's look at the length of uh, L. So the surface area of L is going, it's just a rectangle, so we just need the length times the width. Um, so LW for length times width. The length of this thing, we could call it six, and we need to know how far this is, and we can see that it's three from this side. So it's gonna be six, that's the six, and then this part here is three, because it's the same as this. So six times three equals 18 centimeters squared. Great, that's nice and easy. Uh, we're gonna ignore this one, ignore it completely, because we don't need it, all right? But we do need the one that's up on the top here, so we're gonna figure out what the top is. Top equals, still a rectangle, still length times width, okay? Should stop writing the x, because we're gonna use x for variables a lot. 
Okay, so ooh, the uh, the top is still length times width because it's a rectangle. The length is 10 centimeters. You can see it right there, 10 centimeters. And the width is three centimeters. So 10 times three is 30 centimeters squared. Okay, we did not include that bottom part because we know it's gonna be attached anyway, so let's not even bother. So one surface area equals 48 plus 18 plus 30 plus 30, okay? So what's that? Uh, that's uh, uh, 58, 64, 94, 70, 72, 74 centimeters squared. We're half done. We figured out that this one up here, okay, delete that. We found out that this one up here is 94 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's the surface area. Now we got to do this one. So I'm just going to expand our page down. Okay, and I'm just going to separate my work out a little bit with maybe a little squiggly line here. So for shape number two, it's a little easier because it's a shape we've seen before. It's a rectangular prism. Top matches bottom, front matches back, sides match. We do not need to worry about the overlap. Let's just not even add it in. Then we don't have to worry about subtracting later. So what do we need? We don't need the top, but we do need the bottom, okay? So bottom, it's a rectangle. They're all rectangles. So it's, they're all gonna be length times width. What's the length of this? That's eight. And then what's the width of the bottom? It is three. I can tell because it's up over there as well. So it's gonna be eight times three equals 24 centimeters squared. That was easy. Okay, now let's do front and back. Front and back are gonna be exactly the same. They're exact same shape. So there are two of them. So I'm gonna go two times, length is eight. Okay, two times the length width. Okay, so two times the length is eight on the front. And the width is, how tall is it here? It's four, I can tell from this one right here. So there we go, two times eight times four. So that is 32 times two is 60 four centimeters squared. And then what's the last thing we have to do? We have to do the left side and the right side. So the left side and the right side, they're both the same. So let's just do two times length width again. Okay, what's the length? Looks like three and the width or height is four. So it's gonna be two times three times four. Okay, three times four is 12 times two is 24 centimeters squared. So this one, was pretty easy. Let's get the total surface area. So number two, surface area equals uh, 24 plus 64 plus 24. Okay, so that's 48 plus 64. 48 plus 64 is 112 centimeters squared. So 112 cm squared. And I'll just make a little note up here that this one is the surface area is uh, 112 okay? cm squared. So we've got, we figured out the surface area of top object. We figured out the surface area of bottom object. We never included the blue, the dark blue part here and here because we know that the top and the bottom are just gonna meet anyway. So they're not gonna be on the outside of the object. We can just ignore both of those. And we figured out two different measurements that we can add together to get the total. So I'll just separate this part out again. So total surface area equals the top piece plus the bottom piece, okay, equals, okay, so 112 plus 94 is 206, 206 centimeters squared. Now, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes on that. Uh, you've seen me make mistakes before, I usually leave them in. And uh, I do that because it, you know, it shows you that you really, really have to be careful when you do these. And if there's a mistake when you look in the back of the answer, the uh, back of the textbook for the answers, at least you can go through your steps one by one and find out where you made an error. All right. So I'm not going to check all that in front of you. I'll take some time after the, the video is done to double check. Okay. Next one. Compound object. Now we've got some overlaps that we're going to have to deal with because the two shapes are different sizes, right? If these were two pucks on top of each other, we wouldn't have to worry so much about the overlap. But because the top shape, the top uh, cylinder is, is smaller than the bottom cylinder, 
we're going to have to do a little a little overlapping and a little extra math. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just label this as object number one and this is object number two. Let's start with object number one. Okay, what do we need to consider on this? Well, the bottom's hidden, so let's not worry about the bottom. We're going to need the top and we're going to need the wraparound part. Okay, so the top for object number one. Uh, top's a circle. So our circle, okay, the diameter on the top part is 14, which means the radius is 7. Okay, on the bottom part, okay, number 2, the object of number 2, the diameter is 26, which means the radius is 13, exactly half. All right, so on the top, what do we need to know to make our surface area? Well, we certainly have to have um, the area of the top, pi r squared. Okay, so what's pi r squared? It's going to be pi r squared, and then we're going to have to add to that plus what is the measurement of the rectangle on the outside? Well, the rectangle on the outside is going to be uh, 2 pi r okay, times height, and the 5 is the height. So let's just start plugging numbers in. We know what pi is. It's 3.14. Great. We know what the radius is, it's seven, and it has to be squared, okay? We know what two is, it's just two. We know again that pi is 3.14, right? We know that r is seven, and we know that h, the height, is five, okay? So we've got all the numbers we need there. We don't need to worry about the bottom. Normally I'd put a two in front of this because the, the, the top part, which is this chunk, Okay, it would have a top and a bottom, but because we don't want to include the bottom in this because it's it's in the middle of the cake uh, or whatever this is, um, yeah, it's a cake. We don't worry about it. Okay, so let's just uh, let's just figure out what the math is here. Three point one four times seven squared is forty nine. Okay, order of operations have to do exponents. Okay, this one's all multiplication, so it actually doesn't matter what order I do it in. So I'll just do it all at once. Two times three point one four times seven times five equals 219.8. So this part is 219.8. Now let's go a little further on the bottom. 3.14 times 49 is 153.86, 153.86. And we have to add to that the 219.8. And our final answer is 153. 0.86 plus 219.8. Our final answer is 373.66. So our top object is 373.66 centimeters squared. Great. Number one taken care of. Okay. Obviously, they're going to need a little more room. Let's deal with object number two. Okay, it's the same measurement. The only thing that's different is we've got to worry about a little bit of an overlap. All right, so let's start with the top. Okay, let's start with the top. Now, the top is the part that has the overlap. Oh, you know what else we have to consider? The cakes are covered in frosting. What's the area of frosting? Ah, you always got to look at the real world application of the math. We do need to frost the top of this part. We need to frost all around. We need to frost the shelf. We need to frost around the outside of this cake, but we don't need to frost the bottom of it, do we? Okay. When have you ever seen a cake that had frosting on the bottom where it hits the plate? It's usually just cake. So we're not going to include the bottom of the bigger of the bigger uh, cylinder here, but we will consider, we will do the top because we have to get this little shelf here. And in order to get this shelf, we have to figure out what the full circle would be and then subtract the part that, you know, that the top piece of the cake is hitting on it. So for the top, we know that our uh, area is going to be uh, uh, two, uh, pi r squared, right? So our area is going to be pi r squared. So for the top of our cake, the r is 13. So 3.14 is pi times 13 squared equals 3.14 times 169. Why do I know that? Just because I memorized that chart. 3.14 times uh, 169 equals 530.66. Okay, now this is a point where students kind of go off track sometimes because they forget that we just calculated the entire circle for this bigger piece. We forgot to take out the chunk that's overlapped because we don't have to ice between these two. So what we're going to do here 
okay, is we've got to consider the overlap. What is the overlap? The overlap is whatever the bottom of this cake was, the, the top cake. Well, the bottom of this cake, number one cake, is the same as the top of the number one cake. So we already know what the overlap is. The overlap is this little chunk right here, pi r squared, which was 153.86. So why do that math over again? We already know it. So our total, spell total correctly. Okay. I might even not even call it total because it's, it's just for the top part. So I'll just put the top surface area equals 530.66 minus 153.86, which we had already figured out prior to this, 153.86, which gives us an answer of 376 decimal eight centimeters squared. So that's the important number that we have to remember, not the 530. So that's just the top of that cake. Now we need the outside of the cake, right? Or the part that we'll call the wrap around. Maybe I'll just call that wrap. Well, wrap is just length times width because it's just a rectangle. Do we know what these are? Well, we don't know what the length is, but we do know that it's five centimeters tall. So we do know that, let's call it the width, is five. What is the length? Well, remember the length is just gonna be the the uh, circumference of that top circle, okay. which is just the perimeter of the, of the circle. And perimeter or circumference of the circle is either two pi r or pi times d, pi times d diameter. We've been working with radius here, so let's just keep working with radius. So the length is going to be two pi r, okay? And then the width is just the width. So let's start subbing in numbers that we know. We know pi is 3.14. We know that the radius is 13, okay? We know that the width, in this case, it's the height is, I think it's five. I wanna double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's five. So we've got all the numbers we've need. We've filled in everything that we need. Now we just gotta do the math, right? It's all multiplication, so you can just do it all at once. Two times 3.14 times 13 times five is 408 decimal two. So this is 408 decimal two centimeters squared. Now we can use these two numbers because we've got the top part minus that overlap. So that's the shelf there, the shelf that runs around the outside. Okay, and we've got the outside of the bigger cylinder. Now we can just add them together. So number two, the surface area equals 376.8 plus 408.2, which gives us a grand total of 785 centimeters squared. Okay, not quite done. We figured out the area of the surface area of the top. We figured out the surface area of the bottom. Now we just need to add them together. So top, basically top cake plus bottom cake. So a little bit more space again. All right, so total surface area equals our 785 plus 373.8 equals 1,000, 1,158.66 centimeters squared. Don't forget units, that is a one, okay? That is your total surface area of all the icing that we need and remember, we didn't need icing on the bottom of this cake, and we also didn't need icing on the bottom of the top, the, the top cylinder because it was basically sticking right to the bottom cake. So we did top of the cake, round this outside, this little shelf here, and then around the outside on the bottom. And we finally came up with a big number after a lot of steps, 
But when you do it in order, it's not so bad. Um, some of these, you're going to need to remember Pythagoras. I'm not going to go through Pythagoras again because I've got a couple vid videos dedicated to it. I think I might separate uh, this into one more video. So uh, maybe try a couple of the cylinders and cake type questions that are in the text. And I'll make a separate video for this one because it's, again, it's just another level of complexity. We've got multiple shapes in this one. So look for the next video very shortly, part three.